Welcome to this series on cooking with The Microbiome Expert. We're going to talk about a wide variety of food and cooking topics. Oftentimes in my consultations, people will tell me they start going in radical diets. And we're going to talk about in these, this is series about the low FODMAPs diet, the very little on the vegan diet, uh, the carnivore diet, and the keto diet. Okay, so with the low FODMAPs diet, this is something I also have a video on. Please check this out. So again, in my consultations, all the time people are bouncing around from, I tried the vegan diet, I tried the low FODMAPs diet, I tried the keto diet. And uh, so none of these, these don't offer permanent solutions. They're just simply avoidance of foods that you are sensitive to. Now, the one part of the low FODMAPs diet that I am typically in agreement with is the elimination of dairy products. However, the reason why they say don't consume dairy products is different from the reason I say don't consume dairy products. They say don't consume dairy products because of the sugars, because of the lactose, etc. Okay, fine, if you have lactose intolerance, fine, don't consume lactose. But my concern are the dairy proteins, but that's other videos, so let's stay on the topic of the low FODMAPs diet. The low FODMAPs diet takes out these amazing things. Like, really? You want to take out carrots? High in pectin. You want to take out apples? High in pectin. You want to take out asparagus? High in inulin. High in glutathione. You want to take out beets? Again, a great source of nutrients. You know, what else? I mean, it's, it's insane. You want to take out leeks? A high source of inulin. So they, they, they just go on and on with this, with this irrationality. Even garlic as well, another good source of inulin. These things, I have videos on each one of these topics, on pectin, on inulin, and on other prebiotics. These are the preferred fuels of the good bacteria in your microbiome. Names I talk about all the time. F. prausitzii, different species from Roseburia, different species from Carpococcus, different species from Ruminococcus, etc., etc., etc. Their preferred fuels come from here. If you're going to avoid feeding your microbiome their preferred fuels, then the bad guys are going to continue to dominate. Now, in my presentation on low FODMAPs, I went through and found every human fecal microbiome trial where low FODMAPs was administered. And there are drastic reductions in the good bacteria in the number, more than half of these trials. Now, some of these trials lasted three to four weeks, some of these trials lasted a little bit longer than that. So these reductions in good bacteria happen pretty quickly. So yes, are you avoiding symptoms? Of course you are, I'm not gonna dispute that. So you can avoid the symptoms caused by the fermentation of asparagus or carrots or what have you, or you can actually solve the root cause by addressing the imbalance in the microbiome. Now again, I've talked about this before, does pectin feed some bad bacteria? Yes, and again, both of these are good sources of pectin, as well as your root vegetables, for example. Yes, it does. There's data to show that, too. But again, you have to push through the... This, the there's a, there has to be a battle going on, okay, for real estate in the gut. It's those first two weeks where my people, whether it's by protocol or consultation, they have the most challenges, because that's when the battle's going on. Because again, the bad guys can ferment some of this, but the good guys, they really prefer the stuff, all these, all these good fibers here, okay? So we have to drive that battle, and as time goes on, as we push that with the proper blending and dosage of the prebiotics right for the needs of the individual, we're gonna tilt that battle in favor of the good guys. Now they're gonna control the environment, they're gonna control the pH, they're gonna control the oxygen availability. Now they are going to be able to outcompete the bad guys for these prebiotics. So that's what we're looking for. That could take two weeks, it could take three weeks, and some people it takes a little bit more, which is why if you do a consultation with me, my email support is much more so than say a protocol, which I'll answer two emails for a protocol. With a consultation, if you're one of these people who takes three, four, five, six weeks, I can work you through it. And oftentimes I'm there as really emotional support. I get a lot of emails saying, guy, I'm really bloated, I'm really uncomfortable, is this you know, par for the course? And I say, yeah, it is. You have to work through it. Every once in a while I have to alter something, but again, it's this, it's this uncomfortable hurdle, and that's one of the ways I'm different from everyone else, 
is everyone else is focused on bug killing and food avoidance. And I say, no, I say, let's tackle this head on. However, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. You're not going to like me for about two to three weeks. But after that, we're going to cross that hump and then we're going to start the smooth sailing from then on out. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, somewhere around here, you can go to my website where you can schedule a consultation with me. You can also view the protocols. And here, you can watch the next video.